world burn, watching the world burn. July 24th, 2024. Let's get into it. I guess the the top story right now, you know, breaking news is uh, Netanyahu. I think he just finished his speech, or he's still making it at this time to the Congress. And all that I heard was he said it's a fight of good versus evil. <laughs> I agree with that. And guess who's on the evil side? That war criminal Netanyahu. I can't believe that the Congress let him speak. You know he's a convicted criminal by the International Criminal Court. He's killed over 300,000 Palestinian civilians, women and children mostly. And then I heard that 50 Democrats in a symbolic move in Kamala Harris boycotted the, uh, the speech. Well, that's just, that's just absurd. They're the ones voted unanimously to send 2,000 pound bombs to Israel so that they can exterminate the Palestinians. I hope Muslims don't fall for this stupid crap. Now, was this damaging to the Republicans? Hell yeah! Republicans are too stupid to know what's going on. They want to get their PAC money from APAC, you know, and so I, I don't believe a single Republican boycotted the speech. I don't know if Rand Paul was there or not. I hope he did. But now the Muslims look at the Republicans and say, well, we know that Republicans are unanimously for bombing and killing Palestinian women and children and exterminating the Palestinian race in a genocide. But at least 50 Democrats didn't show up, even though they unanimously voted to send 2,000 pound bombs to Israel. I tell you, the Uniparty at work is the most evil institution I've ever in the history of the world. In the history of the world. Uh, let's just touch on the Ukraine war for just a second. I posted a ex post uh, the uh, New York, I think they spell it N I U Y O R K. I always fun, found it funny that there's a city in uh, the Donbass that's called New York, but it's about to fall. And then there's only two more cities to fall, and then the Russians will have captured or eliminated all of the. Uh, the Ukrainian forces, for the most part, in Donbass. The, from that point on, it may take them a couple weeks or a month to mop things up. So the people of Donbass have been liberated. Uh, they won't be shelled anymore. As you know, the Ukrainians shelled the civilians, killing uh, about 15,000 uh, Russian-speaking uh, Ukrainians, their own people, killing their own people in that civil war that was going on that began right after the uh, Maidan coup back in 2014. So uh, that's the news out of Ukraine, of course, on all fronts. All fronts now, the Russians are advancing. And the Ukrainians just don't have the manpower to replace it, nor do they have the, uh, the um, you know, the shells or, you know, they're running out of uh, equipment. They're running out of ammunition. So it's just a matter of time now before that war comes to an end. The other news was uh, there was an Iskander strike, took out uh, 50, 50 NATO uh, advisors. Uh, the Russians say that these were, uh, I think, I can't remember, 17 Brits, uh, and then of course from all other nations of NATO. Uh, that was a huge strike, if the, you know, that's according to the Russian Ministry of Defense. So take that with what you will. So uh, if they did just take out 40, 50 NATO advisors, and by the way, the Russians are saying these weren't mercenaries, these were NATO troops. Just a little bit of distinction there, a little difference for you to chew on. So that's kind of the summary. I mean, always go to the military summary channel if you want to see, you know, the uh, you know the, this field got taken or this tree line. And plus, he can speak the names of all the cities that that are you know that are in question right now. Shows you all the advances. I mean, nobody does a better job than the Military Summary Channel. I, I was watching the Weeb and a couple of others, but man, I just, I just started just, like, that's how I get my, he, get, he, he does about two videos a day. I don't know how the guy does it. And uh, he's got all the icons, and he even hits on politics all around the world. So, you know, I, I hate 
turning people away from my channel and giving them to other channels. <laughs> but, uh, there are people out there that just do a hell of a lot better job than I do, you know. All right, I, I'm getting a little winded here. It's, it's hotter than hell, if you couldn't tell. Could probably got some sweat in my eye right now. Let's take a break. We'll get on the next topic. All right, let's get the turtle on the video. There he is. I hate scaring him like this, but I just love looking at him. Hopefully you can see him real good. Let's get down just a little bit closer. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty so cool. I love seeing animals on the trail. Woo. All right. Next topic I want to get into was the assassination attempt on Trump. We've got a lot more information coming out now. Uh, if you go over to peakprosperity.com, peakprosperity.com, that's Chris, Chris Martins, and he's got an X account where he's posting everything. They're doing a civilian uh, analysis of the shooting, and I, I don't know if you follow my videos at all. I came out right after that event took place. I told you there was a second shooter. Now, I didn't have any evidence to that regard, but I said there was no way that was a professional hit. Now, I don't think that kid was a professional. I'm not even sure the kid even got a shot off. I think it might have been two completely different shooters. Because what the uh, sound analysis is showing was you had the professional shot, that the one that clipped his ear. If you listen to the first three shots, it's pow, pow, pow. Now, if you're a professional shooter, see what you're doing there is you're breathing. You, you take your deep breath, breathe out, gently squeeze that trigger, and that was the first shot. So now you, your muzzle has kicked a little bit, okay, it's kicked up a little bit. So you have to wait a second or two to acquire the target again, and that's why there's a pause between the first three shots. Kapow! Kapow! I'm acquiring my target. Kapow! Then, the second shooter which I'm not sure was the kid. I can't say for sure. You heard the pop, 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 pop. Five shots. Pop, 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 pop. And then there was a sixth shot. I mean, a, you had five, three, and then the final shot was supposed to be the kill shot on the, uh, on the kid. I'm not so sure because I thought the sniper's shot came because these were all in rapid succession. And I think there was another shot that took place six seconds later, which was supposedly the Secret Service taking out uh, the kid. So, two shooters, in addition to the Patsy that was on the roof, I think, could be, we haven't, but like I said, Chris Martinson, go over to his channel, he's doing all the analysis. I'm just following along at this point and kind of bringing you up to speed on my, my, my interpretation of everything that he's doing. So that's, uh, and then what, what had happened? What happened after that? Do you, do you think this was a government conspiracy? Well, I think we've got ample proof of that just by the, the sheer uh, magnitude of uh, how they set Trump up. But look at what happened afterwards. Look at what happened afterwards. You know, if, if like Chris pointed out, I, I wish I could take credit for all this, but he pointed out, if you're doing a crime seed investigation, Okay, you don't clean up the crime scene right after the crime takes place. The bleachers are down, man. They took them down within a couple of days. Those bleachers needed to be analyzed. The bullets pulled out. The whole area swept. You know, the uh, like he pointed out, the room where those uh, police officers were. You know, he's thinking that the shot, that shot f that came from the, uh, the second floor of that building to kill the kid. You know, in addition to maybe the sniper hitting him also. So sweep that room for a gun residue. None of that took place. So the, the FBI is not even doing an investigation. In fact, they're the cleaning squad. They're cleaning up the crime scene so that nobody can ever go back and, and make their own investigation. I mean, the bleachers are already down. Everything's, all this blood's off of the roof. All the shell casings are gone. You see what, this, this is a massive cover-up. A massive cover-up. Worse, worse than in the Kennedy. See, the, the thing about the Kennedy was they didn't have cell phones. We couldn't do a civilian analysis. I mean, there's been a lot of books and analysis done. We all know that it wasn't just uh, Oswald. It was, it, it was a, the grassy knoll. 
you know, maybe two or three shooters, just like against Trump. I'm telling you, I think it was, it was two shooters at least. And the kid got make three. I don't think he got a shot off. So I wanted to talk about that. And then let's get into Ka Kamala. You know, and what I take umbrage with her name. Back in uh, college, just tell you a funny story. My roommates used to call me Kamala, the Ukrainian Hebe. <laughs> Oh my god, and what, the reason why they called me that is because I was dirt, I mean dirt, dirt, dirt poor. So whenever they, um, the uh, hall, you know, where you, you know, my, I paid for the food contract. So if I couldn't get my food from the college, I couldn't get any food at all because I had no money. Hell, I couldn't even go out to the bars most of the time because I was completely broke. So I was always uh, mooching off them guys if they had any food in the fridge and, and the uh, dining hall was closed. I would always raid that fridge, get a little bite to eat. Most of the time I would ask them, you know, and they would always say, yeah, all right, yeah, whatever. So, uh, but I, I tell you what, I paid for it one time. There was a fish in there and I didn't know. I mean, it had been in there about a month. It kind of smelt a little ripe. So I, I cleaned that fish. I mean, it kind of stunk a little bit, but I thought, you know what, if I fry this up real good, you know, if there's any uh, bacteria on this thing, it should kill the bacteria. Oh my God, that was the worst case of food poisoning I've ever had. I mean, if you ever had it coming out of both ends at the same time, it was just unbelievable. I almost died from that, eating that fish. So Kamala the Ukrainian Hebe was a good good title for me. <laughs> anyway, getting to Kamala, you do realize that what coup just took place and that she's been appointed. See, Democrats are too stupid to even know what's going on. They're all happy, you know, oh, Biden's gone, Biden's gone. You've been disenfranchised, you freaking Democrat lunatic idiots. You didn't even get a vote. She was just an, the anointed one. They just installed her. And, and supposedly Joe Biden's still the president. I mean, you know, what the hell? He's never, he hadn't been president for three years. Anthony Blinken and Sullivan have been running things ever since uh, he got elected back in 2020. But anyway, so... I mean, I, I can't believe that the Democrats are pissed off. Say, you know what? We didn't have a primary. They have just appointed, you know, Joe Biden uh, in, in the primary. Now they've uh, taken away, uh, they've disenfranchised all the Democrat voters and just appointed Kamala Harris as the next candidate. I mean, I'd be infuriated if the Republicans did this. I mean, we had a primary in the Republican Party. That's why I say the lesser of two evils is the Republican Party. I mean, they're still the uniparty, but I mean, we're getting some MAGA Republicans up there that are doing a pretty good job. And then, then they voted. I don't even know how the election commission, election commission, gave comma eighty million dollars out of Joe Biden's election campaign. That's illegal, man. You know, you can't just take the money from Joe Biden and give it to Kamala. That has to come from the donors. Unbelievable. And if I were a donor, I'd be pissed off. I'd say, look, we meant that money to go to Joe Biden. We didn't donate to Kamala Harris. But I'm sure the, the elite that are financing the Biden campaign, probably most of them are okay with the decision. Because they're all dem Democrat elite lunatics trying to destroy the world. Anyway, this is the next two topics. Woo, it's hot today. So getting back to the assassination attempt one last time was uh, now that they've uh, plotted the trajectory of all those bullets, it's an even bigger miracle that Trump is alive. Every one of those came damn close. I mean, those were all professional shots. I mean, the first one being the best one because he had the most time to set that shot up. But every shot that came thereafter, including the Stuck 05, which tells me the kids the kid didn't make those shots, those were damn close. And unfortunately, Corey, the fireman, lost his life, uh, you know, Another reason to have kept the bleachers up, because somebody was murdered. But the FBI, the cleaning crew's been in there. They cleaned up all the evidence. Nobody can conduct an investigation now. It's all over. What are we, just a, a couple weeks out? We're not even that. And they've cleaned the entire crime scene? Does that tell you something? Oh, man. All right, I want to get into Florida real estate for just one second. Because I just saw a video on this. Because I'm always interested in Florida real estate. And, uh, and then I'll give you the things that I've been doing to try to stay in Florida because I, I love it here. This is my home now. You know, my family's all dead up in Virginia. I don't ever want to go back. In fact, I'm going to be buried here in Florida. 
But anyway, he was talking about the condo crisis that's coming up. I didn't, you know, I didn't really think about it. But remember the back, uh, you know, that's a story that hadn't been in the news for a long time. And uh, that, that huge condo building that fell down killed, I think, uh, 90 people. What a travesty. That was in Miami, I think. And uh, I don't know if you remember that story. But then the, uh, the Florida legislature took up and passed a bill that now the, the, the condo buildings, these skyscrapers, have to be uh, inspected and uh, kept up to date, kept, kept repaired. So uh, there's a lot of buildings that are 30 years old that are coming up for huge inspections. And, and so what's happened is it's thrown the, uh, the HOA condo rates through the roof. I was, there was one condo building where they were assessing the, the uh, retirees that, you know, and most of them are just snowbirds, you know. That's just a second property that they used to rent out. See, now they can't even rent it. They were going to assess them $60,000. <laughs> I mean, if you assess me $60,000, I'd have to, I'd have to, I mean, and, and so, and they can't sell them. The, the, the market, now I told you, look, real estate crash was coming. And right now, the number of homes and the number of condos that are hitting the market because people are being forced to sell because they can't afford to live there. And we're not even talking about the insurance rates. You know, on the coastal areas, it went sky high. And my insurance rate has gone from about, well, I got here in 2017, that was about 1,300 to almost 2,400 now. And I'm, I'm in central Florida in a freaking HOA in a, in a protected area. You know, I got a huge fence to break down the uh, hurricane winds and everything. I mean, holy moly, I can't imagine what other people's insurance rates have gone to. So everybody's being forced to sell. So you're going to see in the next six months, probably, the condo prices. I mean, that's the good news. The condo prices are going to come way down, especially on the older buildings, he was pointing out. But what's that going to do to the people that bought in these new buildings? You know, because they paid top dollar. So now they got these huge HOA rates. Uh, they may have to pay for the repairs. I mean, to me, the state passed the legislation. The state should pay for the uh, repairs on the condo buildings or at least help out in some kind of way so that these uh, people, I mean, I feel bad for them, man. They're all going to lose their properties. And, you know, and, and selling into this market, yeah, if you sell right this second, you might get a decent price or at least get back what you paid for it. You give it another three months, six months, they're not going to get even the money that they paid for the condo out of it in a, in a flash sale. Hell, you may see people just walk away if they still got loans on those, just like in 2008. So I wanted to talk about that for just one second. So I just heard one of the stupidest statements on the radio. <laughs> that this is why Republicans lose. It was Sean Spicer. He, and I'll call him out, man. He's one dumb son of a gun. He says people vote to make their lives better. Democrats don't vote to make their lives better. They vote to make their lives worse. They, in fact, they might vote to make our lives worse. You do understand that, right? These are the satanic pedophiles, man. They don't vote to make their lives... I'll just give you case in point. Look at San Francisco. They keep voting Democrat. That city's a hellhole. Look at Chicago. Look at New York City. I mean, every big city. Look at Milwaukee. Democrats there keep voting Democrat because they want their life to be miserable. God, these people are so dumb. People don't vote to make their lives better. They vote on stupid things. You know, and I keep telling the Republicans to take away the abortion issue. Any woman can get the pill and abort her baby in any state, all 50 states in the Union, all the way up to the first trimester and beyond. I don't think they'd ever get arrested. Anyway, I'm just saying in a Republican state. Uh, it's not an issue anymore. It, abortion's available to every woman in the United States anytime they want to do it. Anytime they want, they can bring that baby out in California and choke it right there. When it pops out the womb, just choke it. Pop its little head right off its body, okay? Tired of people talking about abortion as an issue. All right, sorry, I got on my box there. I wanted to help you out in a certain kind of way. I don't know if you follow my videos, but I had uh, my wife's name. I did a video all about this. Her name was on the mortgage, and uh, they were coming after me to get her name off of the mortgage, and rightfully so. And uh, I called up the mortgage company, and of course they were, you know, oh no, you have to refinance. Why would I want to 
refinance. You know all the fees and everything that you pay to refinance? So I looked around, I said, well, I could draw down my IRA. I can take a bunch of money out of my Roth IRA because the only choice I had was to pay off the mortgage. Now I had that option because I only owed 40,000 on the mortgage. So I called up the mortgage company and tell you how crazy they are. I said, look, you can leave me no choice. I'm just gonna have to pay off the mortgage. That means you're not gonna get any more interest. You know, how many, how many loans do you have where people to pay up six months in advance? We don't care. Okay, so I paid off the mortgage. Now I've got a 7% loan on my life insurance. I just got the, in the uh, interest bill, which is uh, $3,000 just to pay the interest for one year on that loan. But on the positive side, I wanted to tell you, there's a couple of things about paying off your mortgage. Number one, the escrow check just came. That's a significant amount of money. A little over, almost three, almost 3,000. So yeah, it's 3,000 that I could manage myself. Now I gotta pay the, uh, the uh, insurance bill and I gotta pay the taxes out of my pocket. So it's not like that money is not already allocated to other things, but at least I have it in the bank earning you know, 2% interest, but instead, I'll be paying down that loan. And that's what I'm telling you, pay down your debts as fast as you can. All right, we'll get more on that. I mean, there's the other advantage is, if my insurance gets way too high, because I don't have a mortgage now, like I've told you, you can self-insure. And because I'm in a location where I'm not scared of a hurricane, I mean, it take, if the 200 mile an hour winds, I imagine my house would suffer some major damage. But with my coastal windows and everything, you know, I spent 50,000 on those windows. You know, I, and that's another thing is you got to balance out your expenses. You know, I can't help my HOA fees going up, but they're not going up the way they're going up for those condos. Uh, but I did stabilize my electric bill. I put solar panels on the roof, $83 lease, and my electric bills are running... Um, well, about $35 a month, running the air conditioner, I mean constantly, it's hotter than hell down here in Florida right now. I mean, those electric bills used to run me two fifty dollars about this time of the year. So you can see there's a little, I've stabilized it. It's not that it's a good deal. During the winter, I'll probably be paying more for electricity than what I used to. You know, if I keep the house extremely cold, which I do, I like it really cold. I'm from Michigan for the most part of my life. The other thing was uh, I got a rebate coming, uh, and that was a lot of work, I ain't gonna lie. They don't make it easy to get these rebates. I mean, you got to sit there and fill out the paperwork. Make sure you keep all them white stickers on your windows. They want all of that information. You know, I mean, you got to type it all in. It took me hours and hours. But, you know, and I think I'm only going to get 400. But finally, they just came out today and they did the inspection. So that's 400 more dollars in my pocket for just doing an upgrade. But also, that's another reason my electric bills are so low. Those windows, not only is it soundproofing, I mean, it's saving me so much in electric electricity. And like I said, I disconnected the gas line, so I don't even have a gas bill no more. I just made everything electric because look, I got the solar panels, right? So you see, at least I've cut or stabilized the expenses. I can't say I really cut them. I can't stabilize the HOA. I can't, well, I can stabilize the insurance because I can just say, no, I'm not going to renew my homeowner's insurance policy. I'm going to self-insure if it gets too expensive. You know, because I'm on a disabled salary fixed salary now I, you know and also uh I've, another thing i wanted to keep encouraging you silver is back down below 30 last i looked it's in the 29 to 30 range so you can uh, um I, what was it uh, sd bullion's got a special on uh god i can't remember it's a, it's a round it's not a i always want you to buy the britannicas or the philharmonics or uh well i mean you could pay the premium i think it's 4.99 on eagles right now I don't think they're worth it. And then, of course, um, the Cougarans, you know, any of those. But uh, these are just rounds. I can't remember the Liberty rounds. Anyway, if you click on deals, you'll see them right away. So you could pick up a sleeve of those. I can't do it because I got to pay down this uh, huge loan that I took out to pay off the mortgage. But I just wanted to give you some free uh, financial advice. Let's see if I think of anything else. So if a Democrat ever walks up to you and says Donald Trump is a threat to democracy, I hope you just punch him right in the nose and say, look, man, you just, your, your leader was just anointed or christened uh, queen of the United States. You didn't even get a vote. You didn't even have a primary, you stupid Democrat, lunatic, idiot. The other thing is um, I wanted to get on to uh, these green lunatics in the Democrat Party. 
I was thinking it's Dr. Simon Goddard. He was the guy who was uh, making a big stink. Uh, Chris Mortensen was too. About when the jab came out, you know how dangerous it was going to be, and he got banned everywhere. <laughs> he lost his job. I don't know. I think he's living in some other country now. I mean, he was uh, Fauci came after him in a huge way. I was Fauci not in jail. That little short freaking troll killed 10 million people, and he's not in jail. You see why I'm calling them Democrat lunatics? I hope Trump puts that little bastard in jail when he gets in office. I haven't heard him say anything about it. Killing 10 million people, like like Stalin said, I keep repeating it. Kill one person, go to jail. Can tell million is just a st statistic. Anyway, these green lunatics. So Dr. Simon pointed out that, you know, c CO2 is a good thing. Trees, plants love CO2. Did you know that? I mean, I bet Democrats don't know that. So trying to limit the CO2, that's the stupidest I ever heard of. Have you ever seen, like, pictures of the Earth? I mean, you know, I guess you, you could call them simulations of what the Earth looked like back in the dinosaur days. The, the CO2 levels were off, off the charts back then. That was when the planet was somewhat, you know, millions of years younger, okay? And it, the world was just a green ball. So CO2 levels is a good thing. Now, if you want to fight CO2, ask a Democrat. Say, you, you know what, you, you green lunatic, when was the last time you planted a tree? Uh, I don't know. You know, go out and plant a damn tree if you're going to sit there and go on, on green. And then you say, well, I don't have a yard. I live in an apartment. Okay, talk to the city. They can always use help. If you buy the tree and talk to them, say, is there a spot where I can plant whatever, your favorite tree? You know, I encourage fruit trees. At least then you get some food off of them. You know. So go out and do that, man. Even if you're a Republican. Go out and plant a tree. Holy moly. The, uh, the next thing I wanted to get to. And this was a huge announcement. I didn't even know. So maybe my book will be made free at Our Country, Our Choice. But anyway, Colonel McGregor. By the way, I put up a video. Our Country, Our Choice is right on top of the... Uh, Democrats that are you know, going to be voting these illegal immigrants uh, with ballots in the next election. That's why we have 20, well, 30, 50 million of them that are going to be voting in the next election. So our country, our choice, they're on top of it. And I put up a video about that. Uh, I don't know. It might have been my last video. So check it out. I'll, I'll, I'll link to it in this video. Anyway, they're coming out with almost like a, a Facebook free speech uh, type platform in August, September time frame, it's going to be huge. They're going to have uh, the ability to conference calls. And I mean, the capabilities just sound like it's going to be, it's going to blow away X. It's going to blow away a lot of these platforms if it's as good as they say it's going to be. I mean, you can go up there, you can join. I think the fee was like 190. And if you can get a discount code, it was like 120 a year. And uh, and, and that's it. They, they, you know, they don't, there'd be no advertisements. It's just a subscription. And uh, supposedly, I mean, you're going to be able to, uh, you know, message people, uh, conference call with people, you know, uh, uh, instant message people. I mean, it sounds impressive. Uh, you have to go to their website. They probably got an advertisement up on OurCountryOurChoice.com. OurCountryOurChoice.com. I mean, I, I'll probably wait till about October, but I'll definitely be joining. So uh, that cybersecurity guy will be on Our Country, Our Choice somewhere. Or that cyber sec guy. I never know which handle I can get. Like I said, I'm on Parlor now as that cyber security guy. Parlor's back. Primitive. I posted a video there and it actually took up the video, which means they've got a pretty good server base. You know, a lot of these uh, platforms you have to post a video on YouTube or Rumble and then link to it from the platform, like on Telegram, for example. But uh, now Parlor's got the servers. So I'll be uploading this video to Parlor. So now I upload my videos now to Parlor. X, uh, YouTube, and Rumble, and that's about it. For, so, for, oh, and I'm on Odyssey. I'll try to get this up on Odyssey too. So I, I think I'm that cyber sec guy on Odyssey. I don't know, but anyway, so I'm on five different platforms now, man. We're going big time, big time. So anyway, there was, you know, that the uh, that idiot woman in front of the Secret Service, she stepped down. But I did want to talk about the. Uh, testimony that was given and you know what was funny was you know I always thought AOC I mean to me she's the biggest airhead that ever existed 
<laughs> and they voted her back. They had a real good candidate in the Bronx. Now, I, you know, I, I can't criticize these cities so much. I don't think those are free and fair elections that take place in these Democrat cities. I think they're pretty rigged. So I can't really fault the people in these cities so much. I, I fault them for the fact they need to stand up and get their elections uh, people that manage the elections cleaned up and you know watch the polls and do what they can to try to keep it as fair as possible but I, I think there's so much cheating that goes on in these cities that even though they voted Republican the Democrat wins every time but anyway she asked a really intelligent question and it was funny because if you ever look at the perimeter they call it the Pac-Man perimeter it goes goes around this way then it does this around the buildings and comes back around and uh, of course the shooter was and a lot of people keep saying meters, meters, meters. Meters is three yards. It was 150 yards, okay, where the kid was. And where the other two shots, or the two, the two shooters were located, just about. So, um, anyway, so she goes, she says, well, you know, the favorite weapon in the United States is the AR-15, which I'm not sure if that's true or not. I Maybe so. I, th I got one. And uh, anyway, she goes, uh, you know, why wouldn't, you know, what's the range on an AR-15? I'd say... You know, you could, you could make a shot from a long ways away, but I, I would say a really tough shot with that weapon would be about 400 yards. So, why, you know, she was saying, okay, why wouldn't you take the perimeter out to at least four or 500 yards at every event? Why would, you let, why would you not even cover 150 yards out? That was one of the best questions I saw. God, I hate giving AOC credit for anything. A lot of people say, oh, Kirk, you won't ever, ever compliment anybody. You know, look at what Trump did. All right, Trump's a freaking idiot too. He pulled out of the Intercontinental or Intermediate Range Ballistic Treaty in 2019. And we're gonna put missiles in, uh, in Germany, six minutes away from Moscow, and now Russians are, are building intermediate range nuclear missiles. That's the dumbest thing Trump could have ever done. And he should have thrown Fauci in jail. He was looting that idiot Fauci. So don't tell me Trump's all perfect and peaches and cream. I just think he's the best. Uh, a candidate we got right now and I, I think he's going to do a lot better job the second time and I like a lot of his policies all right AOC spot on baby yeah this is a good one <laughs> like I said I listen to the radio on these so getting back to Kamala Harris uh, they uh, you know that when she was in um, what was it the um, prosecutor in San Francisco I think it was anyway the uh, black people there called her Kamala lock a brother up <laughs> Kamala lock a brother up. I mean, that's hilarious. Because, you know, what she did was uh, to prove she had tea, she was trying to get become attorney general. She threw a lot of black people in jail for low-level offenses, you know, marijuana possession. They went to jail. Cocaine possession. They went to jail. So she was Kamala lock a brother up, baby. So I just wanted to finish off the video with a couple of uh, ex-posts after the big hike. This is uh, Geoman, or G. Roman. Inspector General of the German Armed Forces Bauer, in five, he says, this is his words, in five to eight years, the Russian Armed Forces will be equipped with materials and personnel which will make an attack on NATO possible. The Army adds 1,000 to 1,500 additional tanks every year. The five, remember when the Russians couldn't make anything <laughs> and they were running out of ammo and that was all being reported in the, in the news? Anyway, he thinks that the Russians are going to attack uh, Germany. I mean, that's, that's so freaking ridiculous. Unless Germany, um, well, when those nukes go in there, I imagine the Russians are going to nuke Germany. I mean, when we put intermediate range nuclear missiles in Germany, hey, German people, if anybody ever watches this video, you better be prepared because Russia's going to nuke you. And then, it's a, then the world ends. So Russian strike on Odessa, this is one that you haven't heard about. I was talking about a different strike. Uh, that was the 40 soldiers. But the Russian strike on Odessa killed many British and French soldiers. A precision missile attack uh, by the Russian army today besides British and French soldiers. The statement was made by Colonel P. Banos, Spanish Army Reserve. His speech was published uh, on the CDC Telegram channel, Pool N3, he explained that this information was obtained from reliable sources who have been known for their information. The Russians carried out the attack on Odessa, in which 18 members of the British Special Air Force were killed and 25 others were wounded. And they tell me French soldiers also died. And then it goes on from there. So I hadn't told you about that strike. By the way, I wanted to, if you ever follow Pepe Escobar, 
I tell you, I, I like the guy. He does some really great reporting. Uh, but I just listen to how this is worded. <laughs> I wish I could write like this. You know, I had to have an editor, and boy, she, we were back and forth because I was such a terrible writer. But I, you know, I'm a great uh, cybersecurity dude. But so, and just like that, crash test dummy was unceremoniously thrown under the bus by the people who really run the show. He did not even know a bus was coming. <laughs> what the hell is on a bus? Anyway, for proverbial lackeys of the people who really run the show are already enthusiastically backing incompetent cackling hyena, Carma, Carmela, Karma Carmela. <laughs> oh man, this word, isn't this great? The Tadre spectacle is called rules-based international order. I just love the wording of that. Uh, and this was um, the, the serial liar, liar, lying, treacherous traitor needs to be in prison. And this is Cat Turd talking about uh, Mayorkas. I did a whole video on that evil bastard that Mayorkas is who's destroyed the country intentionally. And when his lips are moving, Mayorkas is lying. So this is uh, in wokeness. DHS Secretary Mayorkas said he did not deny any requests for more protection by Trump, he called it baseless and false. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just a flat out lie, man. I mean, I can't believe these people. They just get up there and just, and then Congress, you know, they're, they're too, uh, they don't even call them out for the lies. You're not supposed to be able to lie to Congress. I mean, oh my God, it, you know, our government is broke, man. It's broke, broke, broke. Um, so this, this was, uh, Spent a day with electronic warfare units in the Kharkov direction. Now I can definitely say that electronic warfare works. Ukrainian drones are identified and destroyed. I saw this with my own eyes, how I turn over the birds and they fall limply into the field. I think I've posted on this one before. Um, Douglas McGregor, breaking in a 14 to 1 decision, and this is what I was talking about, that Netanyahu speaking before Congress, and they're all standing around like, clapping seals, you know, standing ovations to a freaking genocidal maniac that just came over from Israel. The International Court of Justice has ruled that Israel must immediately stop new settlements <clears throat> and remove all settlers from Palestinian territory. Of course, it, you know, they're a useless body. Nobody's going to do anything, but at least, at least it makes a statement, right? You know, uh, Ukrainian military psychologist Andrei Kazinkachuk Citing the sources announced an unspoken order for the commanders of the armed forces of Ukraine not to retreat at any cost and not to spare people. A unit of the armed forces of Ukraine can be completely destroyed, but the positions must be held. With a couple of days ago, with a couple of days ago mobilized, this strategy does not work and the front line is littered with the corpses of Ukrainian armed forces. Okay, so we'll cut it off right there. God, I, you know, I have so many posts, but the video just gets too long. Anyway, I know your attention span, they say it's only two minutes anyway, so you're only going to watch the first two minutes of the video. Peace out. Stay free. Железная платформа на гусеницах, прицеп на колесах, вмещает полтонны полезной нагрузки, управляется оператором дистанционно. Последний этап проверки после сборки перед отправкой наземного дрона на передовую. Проезд по полю под обстрелом к нашим позициям. Сейчас все как в реальном бою. Взрывы один за другим. Но оператор на безопасном расстоянии может ловко маневрировать дроном даже на удалении в 2 километра. Мощность сигнала это позволяет. В Ираке эти все вам проходит отлично. Управляется легко, как ну, в компьютерной игре. Как плавненько все поворачивает. Ездит плавно. Фульт сам получается от игрушечной машинки. Какую-то игрушную машинку купили, через него перепрошили, сделали. После включения зажигания запуск двигателя, кстати, тоже с пульта. Скорость 20 км в час. А сам беспилотник настоящий гибрид. Мастера ремонтного подразделения группировки войск центр сконструировали его всего лишь за месяц. Двигатель стоит от скутера. Раздаточная коробка от Нивы. Также гусеницы от мото-собаки. Это электронная 
устройство, которое двигается на одной гусенице. Мы эти одну гусеницу сделали в две. Не получилось у нас платформа побольше. Аппарат полезен тем, что не только может безопасно доставить груз подразделением, но и вывести из поля боя сразу четверых раненых. Быстро, чтобы соблюсти правила так называемого «золотого часа». После обкатки специалисты делают первый и самый важный вывод. Тест успешный. Дрон не заглох, не застрял, не опрокинулся, груз удержал. Но уже есть планы, как улучшить работу следующей платформы. Их сборку в подразделении ЦВО хотят поставить на поток. Будем усиливать антенны и, то есть, соответственно, сама мощность передачи, дальность будет увеличена. Доволен, но если доработать, как вот уже у нас есть планы доработки, то там будет еще лучше. Но, в принципе, очень неплохо получилось, я считаю. То есть старались не зря. 